Okay. Hello. Uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, today's date, it's uh, February 22nd of 2021, and it's almost 10 p.m. at night. I believe, finally, <laughs> finally, I believe that my uh, computer, PC computer, it now has, I believe, the latest version of Windows on it. You would not believe the uh, uh, well, I, and I had to format. I formatted, uh, as you can see here, it looks like Windows update. No updates available. Let's see if OS build tells us anything here. Uh, Okay, 20H2, that was the one that uh, I think for about two months, I believe it was, uh, my computer would try to install it and then it would, you know, go through the whole thing, reboot a couple times, all that kind of stuff, and then it would uh, go, you know, and it would say, uh, not compatible or something like that. Uh, uninstalling, you know, uninstall. They really had to install, you know. It's a you know not installing or uninstalling the thing, and so finally I have twenty H two. Had a bunch of crap pop up on it that it just now installed. Uh, popped up. Um, what's that damned? See if that shows up here. Skype. Oh, I hate Skype. A long time ago, I used it. It was a long time ago, and it was, you know. And, uh. uh oh, so. Anyway, the computer's looking good. Uh, I'm just using, uh. What is this brave or whatever is whatever they uh, damn browser that window wants you to use now I have <clears throat> Microsoft Edge the new version I guess oh Now, of course, I had, I haven't installed everything that when I, I formatted. Now, I, you know, I do have laying here someplace, not plugged in, but I do have a external one terabyte uh, drive that uh, there's some stuff on, but I didn't even mess with that. Just get the thing, <clears throat> get the thing working. And then for the last, I don't know, 45 minutes, um, I noticed, by the way, this is an old, sort of an old computer, a, a uh, i5, but the BIOS or something on it, uh, Dell BIOS, the audio, I don't think ever got updated, and uh, I... I saw that the, the that part of it got updated with, you know, something that looked pretty neat. It's in here someplace. So, but I'm having some trouble, and, and I've got a feeling, I hope not, every time I do a reboot or something, I'm going to have to mess with the damned audio. Okay, it shows that the speakers are the Elgato sound capture, and it's not... Uh, but, uh, well, let's see. Well, I don't want a copyright strike. By the way, I, I, I think I mentioned that, um, 
I am signed up for uh, Epic. And uh, so I could play some music or sound effects and I should not get a uh, copyright strike. Let's just pick one of these. I don't know when you have Martha to try it. Big vibes. Look, I'm a bowing pads, which I'm decked up on blue bills, and I won't stop. Pretty, uh, looks pretty interesting. I forget, I think it, I can't remember now what it, 15 or 20 dollars a month or something, I believe. And you can do a lot of stuff with it, and they have sound effects also. So you may start seeing some, a little, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna be playing music, but, uh, Oh, pricing, this will tell you. Yeah, it's uh, $15 a month. Now, I did, I, I mentioned this in another video, I think, last video or two. I just, on YouTube, I recently heard about, you know, Epic Sound and watched a couple videos and watched a couple videos of uh, this company versus another company and the rules and that type of stuff. And then I thought, okay, well, I'll uh, do a free trial for a month. So I went, I had tried them for three months, uh, not tried them, I had to, you know, I got one month free and then for a couple, and I, in the entire three months, I never did anything with them and then I canceled. But I think that a year ago, when I used them, I thought that I had to find something to paste in to YouTube. Uh, so that I wouldn't get a copyright strike, but no, it's uh, apparently you don't have to do anything like that. Just insert it, you know. The, and I actually, you may have noticed, and I'll have to do that over again because I didn't back it up, but uh, I had, uh, you may have heard a video, uh, one of the videos just a while back, a modem sound, kind of weak, a modem sound of, of a dial-up modem when the first 30 seconds or something of the thing starts with uh, an image or something that I picked. Uh, so, oh my God, I have to reinstall all this stuff that uh, needs to be that I paid for. Boy, there's a bunch of stuff. Let's look at here, you know. Xbox, I don't have an Xbox. Uh, I don't, there's no reason to keep that if I don't have an Xbox, can I? I mean, not enough just to take it out of I have no idea what groove music is. I'm not interested in money at all. Oh, 
want to thank all of you very much. Uh, Amazon today just deposited the uh, earnings for uh, people who uh, go to Amazon using one of my links. And you don't have to, by the way, it's a, it's a secure link, you know, HPPS link. You just go there, and then if you purchase something, uh, they will uh, send me money. And they just did today, put it in the bank. It was slightly over $100. So for the, about the last or three, oh, the last three or four months, uh, and you got to remember, I uh, started with Amazon affiliate program, I don't know, way back when they started or something, I think. Um, let's go. Oh, we're already at Amazon, aren't we? Uh, oh, here it is. Oh. So if I go to earnings, I think it will show, let's see, commission payment history, that's where it shows. Hmm. Oh, wait a minute. I think I'm wrong. I don't want to show you my bank account, but Amazon just put a little, about $101 or something into my account. Uh, and they haven't put this as the amount that's going to be for this at the end of this month. I thought it was a little bit early because they always do it almost the very last day of the month. So it's going to be $84 this month. Hmm. I'll have to check that when you guys are not watching. Wait a minute. Just launched Consolidated Summary of Earnings, a way to view all your earnings in one place. Let's see. Oh. Are you monetizing international traffic? Well, anyway, still, thank you very much for uh, let's see. Can I, let's click on this, see what happens. All right, I guess. Okay. Consolidated summary total is $14.78. Uh, okay, I, I don't know how this is off Amazon, on Amazon. This is total. Off Amazon, a dollar twenty-two. Okay, it says date ranges last thirty days. I'm totally confused. Earnings for content on the Amazon website, such as your influencer storefront list, photos, and more. I have no idea what's going on, but keep using the link. Uh, Cost. 
car seat here somebody purchased a car seat gap filler premium pu full leather seat i gotta see what that is oh okay kind of expensive but i guess it's uh i think it might be real leather fine <laughs> Since I don't have a car, uh, let's go back, back, back. Oh, I don't have to go back. I can just delete this. Jakery Portable Power Station Explorer. Wow. Portable Power Station, Explorer, 1000. A 1002 watt hour solar generator with 310 volt, 1000 watt AC outlets. Solar mobile lithium battery pack for outdoor. I think I, this R30 computer speed is USB, I think that's going to be crap $20 or something. Yeah, I think I purchased something like this. There's a whole bunch of things like this now. Uh, my hearing is so messed up, it really doesn't matter. I have a couple, I think, of these things. But uh, really, I, you know, I don't use them. I keep thinking that I might. rechargeable batteries. I bet you people are really, you know, since it, it wasn't just Texas that was hit, hit with, you know, with everything that's happened in the weather-wise, but uh, Texas was really hit. But I think other areas, you know, have been also, and I think uh, people are looking for, yeah. So whoever Thank you very much. Whoever is using the, uh, this looks like a pretty neat device. 1,500 watt hours. Solar generator, lithium emergency battery backup with two AC outlets. For outdoor road trip fishing travel. But it would also come in it help out a little bit. I'm not going to run. I don't not going to run for three days. Of course, maybe you could run some light bulbs. Well, we could figure it out. You know, under watt light bulb, uh, 24 hours, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You could we could figure it out. But and it's it's. Uh, Can't charge devices, of course, heaters, <coughs> hair dryers, air conditioners. Uh, electric kettle on a coffee maker. I guess. I guess they must take a you know a lot more wattage than you think, because of the heating coil or something. Uh, you may be. In, I'm going to put. I'll put the links below to, to, because. Uh, Look like interesting devices, especially since this damned weather thing. And uh, okay, so. Uh, it's 10.17 p.m. Oh. So, I'm, uh, 
I actually couldn't get the, I tried, I couldn't get the, uh, Egato HD60S to work from, I'm not sure what it was because it's worked in the past fine on different, different situations, but I just, for some reason, it wasn't working. So I'm back using my uh, Logitech webcam. I, that's working just fine. Uh, I'm using the uh, Egato Wave 3 microphone. It's sitting right there on the stand. Uh, I did have, on the desk. It's using its desk stand. Uh, let's see here. pull the cord out of the back and who knows what it's going to reset to, you know, be using the micro, the, you know, the microphone, microphone in the, uh, webcam, um, oh, um, Sort of looking here to see what oh, I'm going to need to uh, install. I hate, I've never been good at backing. Uh, I just, for, I, my history is of just when there's a problem, I just format it, you know. And I have backup. In the past, I had a guy gave me can't remember what it looked like now, but it used these tapes, not not cassette tapes. Well, it used cassette tapes, but they were professional cassette tapes, and it was for backing up, you know, compu big computers or whatever. And so I've had a lot of backup type stuff, and just and I paid a little bit uh, a few times and gave up on I didn't like it. Uh, where you sign up with a company, it just... It, is occasionally taking and backing up uh, stuff off. So now my thing has been like slash and burn, you know, just uh, I really wish that my attempt at using, you know, switching over to Apple, I wish it had worked, but I should have known that it wouldn't. Uh, uh, my arthritis sucks. Uh, you know, especially like looking down. I mean, this is even bad, but trying to look at a tablet or, a, you know, iPad or something like that. Oh, God. And then, but I would have stuck with it if uh, I could not get... Uh, I couldn't get signed into the the Play Store. It just wouldn't take my username and password. Uh, well, I mean, I, I used a new username, but I mean, it it just wouldn't take the password. It just wouldn't. Uh, and I work, worked with it and worked with it, and my arthritis was killing me. And then I just returned, you know, returned it. But I did know after trying that for a while that this, looking down, this is not it. So, reminds me of taking the Proxen. I, I don't take, it's not a control substance or anything. You know, you do need a prescription, but this is uh, naproxen, which I forget what the generic, or you can, this is uh Here's the light here. It's 500 milligrams, but whatever the ingredient in this is, you can go to, a, you know, any drugstore and just off the shelf, you don't need a prescription. The only thing, it's not going to be 500, but they sell, I think, like 
250 or 300 milligram just off the shelf. So, I mean, all you have to do is buy it and then take two of them or something, you know. So I'm not getting any good drugs, unfortunately. Excuse me. Uh, I do need. I do need to get in to see the doctor. For an, I'm way past time for the appointment, and I think my last few prescriptions that I've, you know, they say on it. Uh, well, I think the last couple have said, you know, uh, not for a refill unless approved by the doctor, and I, I think uh, they're. The next time I'm, the doctor's going to say I have to come in. It's been over six months for sure, and I think it may be like a year or something. And I used to go, you know, every six months. And uh, I've got some new things to tell the doctor about. So. It is great. I, I don't really want to show that to you either, although I have, I believe. But I, I just really need to know ahead of time what you're going to see. I guess I did, once when I probably had two monitors hooked up, and then I could look over here, and okay, that's okay to show you. But I do look, and I'm sure probably most of you are using it, the uh, where you can look up your medical chart. And, you know, like when you do have lab work done, the doctor, it gets a you know, you, you can go there and actually see the whole thing. Don't have to wait for the doctor to tell you when you come in or send it to you through the mail or anything. You can just look at it. And thank God I had something like that when I was in the hospital with my infected leg for six days. And uh, I, I mentioned about that. I won't go through that again. It hurts even to think about it. Uh on the sixth day, you know, well, I may, may mention a little bit, you know, they had to put a catheter in me, so they put it in. Man, that hurt like hell, of course, hurt like hell. And the nurse, when she did it, she nicked the prostate or something. And so I bled for about 24 hours into the bag, and I knew what, you know, the nurse, that, that nurse, until she went home, you know, she says, I think it's, you know, it was filling with blood. And she was saying, I think there's, you know, you're, I forget how she was putting it, you know. There's, I said, yeah, I think that's, that's starting to show urine going in, and I knew it wasn't. So the next day when she came in, after being off, you know, when she came in, she said, you know, we've got to take, so they took the catheter out. That only hurts like 60% of what the 100% hurt is, you know, putting it in. She took it out, and then she had to put, you know, another one in. This time she didn't nick the thing. But, uh, it, it ended up, you know, of course they write down how much you eat, and I didn't, I couldn't eat anything. And, uh, of course I wasn't putting out much urine, but I don't put out much urine now, <laughs> except I go all the time. And, uh, so anyway, the, at like the sixth day or whatever, the urologist came through first time I actually, I think he might have, or it wasn't him, urologist comes through and, uh, he says, well, you're going to be going home, you know, be going home tomorrow. And I said, where's your, you know, doctor, where's your office located? And, I forget, you know, I said, West Fort Worth. He said, I said, okay, I live in West Fort, so you're going to be my urologist. He says, fine. He says, okay, well, you'll be going home in the morning. He says, do you want to go home with the catheter in you, or do you want to have it taken out now? 
And I said, out. And so he said, okay, took it out. And then shortly after that, uh, the nurse says, you know, you're not, you know, you're not putting out urine, so we have to uh, I said, put it, put a catheter back in you. And then I said, no way. And she says, well, you know, blah, 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 you know. And uh, I said, uh, I don't understand why my Lasix aren't working, my, uh, you know, water pills. And she says, oh, we had to stop that a few days ago because of the uh, medication that you're taking. And it'd be dangerous, deadly for you to, and I said, no, I'll just, I want to take the, uh, you know, the, you know, she said, oh, no, I can't do that. And I said, well, can you call the urologist? And she said, okay. And then she came back and said, the urologist said you couldn't. Now, maybe she did call the urologist, you know. And then I said, no, that's not acceptable. I, you know, blah, 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 you know, and then. She said, well, I'll call a different urologist. Then I think she went and stood at the desk, you know, and I don't think she called another urologist. And, uh, you know, came back and I said, well, then I'm leaving AMA. So I signed out AMA. Well, at first I wasn't going to sign the AMA form, leaving, uh, leaving against, you know, medical advice. Uh, I wasn't going to sign it because they were... I didn't like their attitude. Uh, but then she was so, she was afraid she was going to get in trouble from that head nurse or whatever. Would I please sign it and all that kind of stuff. So I said, okay. So I signed. And so then... Uh, So, you know, my leg was still infected. I mean, I, you know, I was in, I was in bad shape. And, uh, and they were telling me if I went, which way, and I was going to go home and take my Lasix. And, uh, and one of the, I'm not sure if she was a nurse or a nurse's aide or whatever. Uh, as I was leaving, you know, AMA, she was sitting there and she said, Good luck. And I knew she didn't, you know. I said, thank you very much. I knew she didn't, you know. And uh, luckily, of course, my daughter, you know, came to get me. If I'd have had to depend on Uber or something, rather than I would have had to make contact with, the, you know, you know how hospitals are, entrances and all that kind of stuff. And I was in bad shape. And, but, oh, before I left, then I told the uh, nurse, I said, okay, this fancy antibiotic that I'm taking, IV or whatever, what's the name of that? Because I'm going to have to uh, see about, you know, getting that in pill form or something. And she says, well, when a person leaves AMA, uh, we don't we don't give you any information. And I said, you're not going to tell me who my doctor is? You're not going to tell me what medicines I'm taking? Nothing. You don't get anything. I was sorry that I had signed the AMA form, you know, and so I left, and, uh, but I came home, and I could look right on the chart. I could log into my chart and find out what the medicine was. Turned out it was a $6,000 medication, uh, so, but anyway, I, uh, you know, called up the pharmacy and said, you know, and uh, then the pharmacy, when I when they called me back or whatever, they said, uh, your doctor won't approve it, the medication, or it was about two or three days I wasn't getting the medication, and my daughter, grown daughter, of course, you know, she went up and explained to... Uh, the pharmacy, and she actually had the uh, person who worked there, and maybe two of them, crying. So yeah, they were actually crying because you know my my daughter was going to tell me he's going to die, 
and then finally they got they got it approved, and uh, so I started. And if you were watching the old videos, that's when I got what was it? What was it? White tongue? Not white tongue. Something else. I forget, but it was. That was bad, and now. I mean, in the past, I almost never went to a hospital for, I had a pacemaker put in, I had a heart cath done one time, but I really wasn't, you know, I don't want to go in because of the, uh, so I just, you know, But I do need to get and see my doctor and get some things taken away. And I am, when I get the, if I get the $1,400 uh, stimulus money, I am going to buy a uh, stationary bicycle. I know you're all going to say, because you have been saying for years, you know, get out, walk around, Jim. I can't walk around. I can barely stand up. Uh, and walking, just stepping off a curb. I fell in the street one time. Uh, I, there's, whichever time that was, I think there's pictures of my legs, both legs bloodied, you know, and I had trouble getting out of the street, getting up. And, uh, but, and when I saw the heart doctor, uh, I told the heart doctor, you know, I, I know I need to lose weight, and I, I explained too about, I went two weeks to, my feet are swollen up, gross looking, my legs look bad, and uh, when I went to Washington, D.C. for two weeks, my uh, daughter and uh, son-in-law are vegetarian, and so while I was there in Washington, D.C., it was difficult for me, but I... Uh, Every other day, we I went out. We went out someplace in Washington D.C., and I walked for about three and a half hours every other day, and then I rested in between, and I ate basically a, a vegetarian food. And while I was there, I lost for two weeks. I lost weight, and the swelling in my legs went down, and my swelling in my feet went down, and they looked normal. And I they hadn't looked normal in several years and then I returned to uh, Texas and for a little bit I had normal looking legs and feet and then they went right back to the way they were because of what I was eating and my lifestyle so by the way you know take I mean I'm not selling any products or whatever I'm not selling vegetarian food or anything uh, but so anyway, I saw my heart doctor recently. I guess that was after I had this new pacemaker put in. Uh, and uh, he's, I mentioned to him I, I, about the going to, you know, he looked at my legs and it was like, oh, you know. <laughs> and, uh, but I mentioned to him going to Washington, D.C. a few years ago and uh, you know what happened, uh, and he said, "Well, yeah, you need to be, you know, you need to be exercising. You need to be walking." I said, "I can't, you know, I can't walk with, you know." And uh, I said, uh, "I I am going to buy a stationary bicycle," and he said, "No, that, you know, you won't use it." I said, "No, I'll use it. I'll set it right there and." have the television or whatever, and I watch every day a certain program, and uh, he said you won't, he, he says, uh, what do they call, personal, tra not personal trainer, what do they call those people? He says, uh, what you should get is a personal uh, uh, trainer. And I thought, you know, do I look like somebody who, you know, can afford a personal trainer to come to, I didn't say anything, you know, I, I come to my, you know, and uh, I said, no, nah, I don't think that would work out. I didn't say I'm poor, you know. And he said, well, then uh, you should join a health club. And I said to him, 
I said, I know that wouldn't work. I said, I've signed up a couple times for the health club and never even, you know, paid the money and never went or went once, you know. And so I said, I'm going to get a stationary bicycle and I'll put it right next to my bed. And so if I fall off the stationary bicycle, I'll just fall onto the bed, you know. So, by the way, I've mentioned this before in many videos. Uh, if you're a young person, you know, take care of yourself. I, I worked all my life. I was never, there was never a day I didn't have a job. And a lot of times I worked two jobs. And I worked a lot of different jobs. Uh, and I thought I was... I thought I, you know, was in pretty good shape. I thought I was getting a lot of cardiovascular. I guess I was. I know I wasn't. Because at some point I was having chest pain. And uh, they had put me on the treadmill, you know, where you have to have the cardiologist doctor standing right there with you, you know, doing it. And then they raise it. You're walking, you know, walking, walking. And then they raise it up, you know, or whatever. And my blood pressure and I just shot it it just went skyrocketing and then my head felt like it was going to explode and the doctor you know I didn't say anything the doctor said okay that's it stop it you know and uh, he said what well, this is a sign of that that you're you know you're not in good cardiac or you're not in uh, you know your cardiovascular system or your you know I forget how he put it, but it was like I had been, the stuff I had been doing, the walking I'd been doing for eight hours a day or 12 hours a day and all that kind of stuff uh, wasn't doing the job, you know. Uh, and uh, anyway, anyway, if you're a young person, please. I'm going to be 80 in a, in a month, but I've been, well, starting at age... 65, my prostate trouble started. Now, chest pain, I had, you know, uh, I got married at age 26. Six years later, the wife uh, left, took the kids, and uh, I didn't know where she was or where the kids were. And then a lawyer called and said, you know, your wife has filed for divorce. And I said, I know you're not going to believe this. We've been married six years. We've never had any kind of an argument or a disagreement, which was true. Anyway, unfortunately, she came back. And anyway, I was having chest pain during that time. Like when, she, when I came home and furniture was gone and everything was gone except my clothes. I mean, she didn't take the refrigerator or the stove or, you know, whatever, but, uh, uh, for a week, you know, then I was having chest pain for the first time in my life, age 32, but six and six is 32, I think. Um, and uh, so for a week, I thought, okay, I'm going to die, and that's going to teach her a lesson, <laughs> which is stupid, you know. Then finally I had to go to the doctor, and the doctor says, uh, well, first, you know, they do the EKG, and it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> well, they didn't say that, but like, oh, shit, you know, call cardio or EKG stat on this person, you know. Then the doctor looks at and everything, and, says, are you under any kind of stress? And I said, yes, my wife left me and took the kids. And so they, he prescribed Valium. And I took two, you know, I mean, whatever the thing, you know, take one and then take another one or whatever. Took two, chest pain went away. And unfortunately, the wife came back with the kids. And then uh, six years later, she decided she wanted a divorce and she was, you know, she didn't leave me, but she said, you know, I want a divorce. Never loved you, never found you attractive, just married you to uh, get away from my parents. She was 18, I was 26 when we got married. And so uh, I said, okay, well, you know, 
we've got four kids and you know you're handicapped and it's going to be difficult I'll pay child support but you know and uh, so we got a divorce and uh, chest pain started a little bit and I took a couple of Valium. They were the same Valium, by the way, from the six years before. You know, I forget what the expiration date was, but I took a couple of Valium. Chest pain went away. Uh, and then quite a few years later, I forget what was going on. I started having some chest pain. And... Uh, I uh, went to the doctor and I said, well, I've, I've had this thing in the past and everything. And I, I, and I, by the way, that, you know, the Valium, I, I don't use, I think, like four out of the vial, but I think I finally tossed it because of an expiration date. You know, probably still would have been, I don't, it wouldn't have killed me. I think it probably would have just been weaker or something, you know. But I said, well, I know uh, Valium will take care of it. It was like the doctor, you know. No, 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 no. Uh, people abuse, abuse Valium and uh, what's the other one? Oh, forget the other one that everybody for a while liked and the doctors were just writing it like crazy. And all I needed was uh, a couple of Valium and my chest pain would have, I think, stopped. But no, no, you know. And I don't think I look like a drug. You know, I've never taken, I haven't even smoked a marijuana I haven't done any illegal drugs uh, <laughs> they wouldn't give me and I didn't I asked like once I didn't beg or anything I just said oh, it works you know no no yeah we don't do that anymore uh, so you know then eventually after that I had was having chest pain and they did a heart cath you know that's where they take you to the heart cath lab. I was a little concerned about that because the one hot well all the hospitals, but the one hospital especially that I worked at, they would pay security had, had to respond on all code blues. If you're wondering why, I'll tell you, but just you know, it was necessary that security always responds on code blues. Code blues means somebody's, you know, heart has stopped or breathing has stopped or something and everybody you know doctor responds and there's a list of who responds and part of it is to make sure like at one hospital you had one of sec our security duties was to make sure yeah you know, that, that 15 people didn't respond you know uh, the cardiovascular department or the uh, EKG techs or whatever, you know, would respond. You'd have like 15 of them show, you know, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit. And you had to say, you know, okay, a couple of you, you know, that's it. But generally it's, be, you know, because of family, you know, wanting to grab somebody, don't die on me, daddy, don't die on me, or doing, you know, or somebody going to punch a doctor out because you said he wasn't going to die. And, uh, you know, you had to respond on stuff like that. But, uh, Oh, so anyway, at that hospital, we didn't respond because it wasn't necessary. They had everybody they needed to the heart cath lab and the heart cath lab to take you in there and, uh, you know, put a camera and uh, everything through your artery in your leg and go up through you, up to your heart, and then they look around, you know. And I had that done in Miami. And I had to sign paperwork that if, when they found, which I thought they would, when everything was all clogged up, then they'd go in there and they'd clean it out, you know. And so when I woke up, you know, the uh, cardiologist said, Jim, heart valves are okay and no uh, plaque in your, you know, thing. I was surprised. He was surprised too. But uh, there was a point to this. Oh, well, anyway, thank you very much for watching. Wonder what it, wonder what Jim's point was. There was something. Anyway, thank you for watching.